what you see in African communities and women are women tend to, to, to hold it down. Um, so we wanted to highlight that. <laughs> Hey everybody, Layman's Journal here. I want to make one last video about Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Now if you've been following me for a while, you know that my videos really aren't about the movies that I talk about. That the videos are more or less something like an illustration or a prop that I can use for a greater discussion. I just talk about the movies because I know that's what you guys want to hear about. So I try to tether them as much as I can to the realities that we face today. And I think in looking at this movie and the way people reacted to it, I think it's an interesting discussion on the black gender divide and why representation is important. Here's what I mean. When I think about Wakanda Forever, I shake my head because it's a movie that had an amazing amount of potential. And while it will succeed commercially, in fact it is succeeding commercially, that's largely based on the reputation of the first film, coupled with a massive uh, marketing campaign, controversy, and people curious to find out how they're going to handle the passing of Chadwick Boseman. But it's failing critically. Audiences don't like it, comic book fans don't like it, but more importantly, black males in particular who the franchise was made for aren't happy with it. And that doesn't bode well long term. You see, the good thing about making a hit movie is that you make a lot of money. The bad thing is, the secret gets out. You can only fool an audience once. And once everybody knows that what you've made is no good, they won't come back for a second time. And based on the quality of this movie, I don't see the third in the series having any success. In fact, any future projects within the MCU that heavily involves Wakanda or the Black Panther will also struggle to make money. And that's a shame because I hate seeing Angela Bassett, who had a remarkable performance in the movie, have all of that wasted on such a terrible film. And the saddest part about the movie is the way that it aids in the gender divide within the black community. Because you see two differing opinions. Black women for the most part are on board with it. They like the idea of a movie highlighting them in leadership while black men in turn feel disgusted. Because again, this is something that was created for reclaiming our image, the black male image. And it's been taken away from us. Not only has it been taken away, but it's been redirected towards a celebration of the feminist agenda. You know, this movie highlights this utopian fantasy where women rule and everything is wonderful. Now, some of you hearing this are just saying, oh, layman's, it's just a movie. Relax. Why are you so worked up about this? And yeah, I agree. It is a movie, but you need to consider this. Even Jesus spoke in parables. Parables being fictional stories that had a deeper underlying meaning. And the reason why he did that is because he wanted to explain the complexities of the gospel and the kingdom of God. There were just some things he couldn't explain straightforward, so he had to put them in story form. Now, for those of you that are atheists and non-believers, you don't believe in Christianity, the Bible, or even Jesus Christ, I offer this example. There is a film called Birth of a Nation. And no, I'm not talking about the one that came out in 2016 with uh, Nate Parker and Arnie Hammer. I'm talking about the one that came out about 100 years ago in the 1920s. You see, the KKK, which started shortly after the conclusion of the Civil War, had pretty much disbanded. And a man by the name of D.W. Griffith wrote this story with the expressed purpose of rekindling the Klan. And it was effective. So effective, in fact, that the president of the United States of that time, Democrat Woodrow Wilson, screened the movie in the White House. And he praised it. He said it was writing history with lightning, whatever that means. And it also brought the Klan back. My point is, that too was just a movie, just entertainment, fiction, yet that movie brought back the KKK. So when you look at black history, specifically in the South, and you hear stories about the lynchings that took place in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, you can credit all of that to that particular movie that fictional story, that entertainment. So if there's one thing I'd like to communicate, it's that there's no such thing as something just being a movie. All of them, for good or worse, have an underlying message. The stories are fake, but the messages behind the story, behind the art, behind the fiction is real. Because the purpose is to give you a different perception, for bad or worse, big or small. So in the case of Birth of the Nation, it was about romanticizing the KKK, reimagining them as good guys. And as a side note, that's why I was so adamant in opposition to the Woman King. Because just like the birth of a nation reimagines the KKK as heroes, the Woman King reimagines the Dahomey Agoji warriors as freedom fighters, when in reality they were slavers. That's the power of cinema. 
And with Black Panther, the purpose there was to reimagine the Black community, to get the world to see us in a different light, as something more than just athletes, entertainers, criminals, and sex workers. And the first Black Panther movie did just that, on screen at least. It showed us what we could be, what we should be as a culture. But the second Black Panther movie, Wakanda Forever, reverse engineered all of that. It showed us as we were, a matriarchal society of women raising children alone. Oh yeah, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen my previous video, T'Challa was made a baby daddy. But getting back to my point, the movie disregarded men as just the help. So it was a huge step backwards in reclaiming our image as a culture. So yes, representation matters because representation affects perception. It was important for a black man to be there, to be in that movie, not only for our collective image as men, but also for the self-esteem of young black boys. Because how you are presented in media is how others will perceive you. And it's also how children will perceive themselves. Now we've all seen these videos of the infamous doll tests. The doll tests that were created in the 1940s by psychologists Kenneth and Mamie Clark they were designed to show the damaging effects of segregation on the young black mind. It demonstrated how black people were conditioned from youth to see themselves as less than. And you can find dozens of videos on YouTube where people have recreated the doll test experiment and you can see the effects are still lingering, even now. But my point is, children need positive role models. They need to see people that share their reflection on screen if they are to see themselves as more than just inferiors. Having that representation in media boosts their self-esteem. A great example would be the countless videos that we've seen of these young black girls crying and getting excited when they see The Little Mermaid for the first time. She looks like me. She's a black girl. The black Ariel and how much pride they have in seeing a princess, a Disney princess that looks like them. What? Now let me stop right here. I want to pause because I can see where some of the uh, activists that may listen to my page or listen to my videos are going. I am not for the race or gender swapping of characters. I know little girls love seeing a black Ariel, but I don't think you have to race swap a white character for them to have representation. These children will be just as happy to see any black princess because the fact of the matter is none of these little girls that were excited to see Ariel were even alive when the movie came out. It came out in 1989, it's 33 years old. I doubt if any of them have actually seen the movie. If anything, it's more for their adult parents than it is for them. You can have the same result with an original character. So little black boys or teenage boys, they don't need to see a black Spider-Man a black Captain America to have pride in themselves. They need to see a T'Challa, a Blade, a Power Man, Luke Cage. They need to see their own superheroes, not a character that was stolen from someone else, like some secondhand hand-me-down. But getting back to my point, black boys, just like those black girls that were excited to see Ariel, need to see black men in leadership. That was the importance of Black Panther. They needed to see T'Challa married, they needed to see him raising his son. They needed to see him leading as a king. That's why he should have been recast. This is why you see so much representation from the alternate lifestyle community in media. It's why we saw that kiss between those two Dora Milaje warriors at the end of Wakanda Forever and why they were so adamant that it be in the movie. The same with the lesbian couple we saw in the movie Lightyear and the gay couple in Eternals. None of those scenes were integral to the plot, but they wanted them in there anyway because it's a part of getting the culture accustomed to their lifestyle. They want to change the public perception of who they are. And as a side note, have you noticed how common that is in movies that feature us? When I say us, I mean black people. Now, I already mentioned Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Lightyear, and Eternals, but you have projects like Watchmen, Lovecraft Country, House of the Dragon, Moonlight, Empire, all of them feature black men engaging in the lifestyle. Think about that. What message is being propagated there? What are they saying about the nature of black men, black masculinity? I digress. This is why members of that alternative lifestyle community did not like Netflix 
labeling the Jeffrey Dahmer miniseries as part of their community because it's a negative reflection. This is also why Candace Cameron, who's now the chief creative officer for a new Christian family network, has come under fire for saying that her network will promote traditional couples. That's code language for heterosexual couples. Because representation to that community matters. And movies aren't just movies to them. So getting back to the major point of this entire video, if there's one major change that I would have made to Black Panther Wakanda Forever, if I could not recast T'Challa, I would have brought back Killmonger and made him the new Black Panther again. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. His death was not confirmed at the conclusion of the original movie. And we know that he rejected T'Challa's offer to heal him. And we saw him pass out. But we didn't know for sure if T'Challa would honor his request and letting him die. And I personally was hoping that they would have healed him and put him in cryo like they did with the Winter Soldier. And I think it would have been a really cool story or scene to have him go to the ancestral plane while he was in cryo. And there he could make peace with T'Challa, who they've killed off, his uncle T'Chaka, and all the great kings of Wakanda's past. And they could bring him back as a redeemed man, but still having the rough edges that makes Killmonger such an incredible character. I think that would have been a powerful story to see a misguided thug evolve into a righteous leader. I think it would have been an apropos narrative given the current state of the black male youth in this country. Now I know it's not canon, I understand that, but we're talking about the MCU. They don't care about the canon. And again, I'm only coming up with this as an alternative to them not recasting T'Challa. Because that film desperately needed a man, but not just any man, a black man, and not just any black man, but a strong masculine hero. Yes, they had M'Baku, the lovable ape man, but that moron ain't it. Now, they did make him king in the end, but that was more of a token gesture. Homeboy had very little screen time, and of the little screen time he did have, he was getting embarrassed. Now, of course, there are other changes I would make, but like I said, I could go on for hours, and I want to keep this video pithy. So, I'm interested to hear whatever changes that you would make. Please leave them in the comments section. So, if you like this video, Please give it a like and share the link on your social media platforms. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way you will get alerts every time I upload new content. This is The Layman's Journal. Thanks for stopping by. I'm out.